Okay, welcome back, everyone. Uh, we are studying about a very important subject called as temptation. It's important because we go through it. We have to go through it as long as we are here on the earth. So it's good to learn how to overcome temptation right from the start. As a young believer, if you know how to overcome, then we can live by that and we can, you know, uh, be strong in the Lord. So we've seen that Jesus was tempted. Okay, uh, G even Jesus was not spared as far as temptation is concerned. Now tell me, how was Jesus tempted? Let's go to the 40-day experience. How was Jesus tempted? How did Satan tempt Jesus? He was? <coughs> hmm. Yeah, that, that's fine. What Satan did, that we know. How did he do it? Using the word of God itself. Okay, he used the word of God. Okay, fine. Yeah, so that was very deceptive. Uh -huh. He used the word itself and tried to twist and turn. That is there. Anything else we can observe from how? After the... Yes? Yeah, after the... After the 40 days fasting, Satan uh -huh. realized he was he was hungry and uh -huh. so he needed food. So he came with the food that he should turn the stone uh -huh. into bread and eat. Fine. I, I, I mean, all of us are talking about what he did. I agree with that. But how did he tempt Jesus is my question. Yes. Yeah, that's the answer. In the mind. Notice, Satan did not even take Jesus somewhere else. Jesus was still in the wilderness. But we see that uh, in the mind, in Jesus' mind, what he does is he shows him from the top of the temple, right? Like he shows, look, um, if, you, if you jump off from here, nothing will happen. Or you see all the nations of the world, I will give it to you. Was Jesus in an airplane? Like, was he able to see the ground? Was he able to see the nations? Was he able to uh, view, get a view from the top of the temple? Physically, where was he? In the wilderness. He was hungry, he was tired, he was seeking God. Physically, he was still in the wilderness. But Satan is tempting him. And Satan is showing him all these things. Where is he showing all this from? It's all happening in the imagination. You understood? So the imagination is so powerful. It's powerful in every sense. When God wants to speak to us, if you go back to Abraham, God spoke to him, I will make you a great nation. You know, you will have many descendants, like the stars of the sky, like the sand of the shore. So what's happening? For Abraham, he's painting pictures in his imagination. Stars of the sky. Oh, wow. I'll have so many descendants. No, uh, the sand of the shore. I'll have so many descendants. So God has given us this ability to imagine, to think, to dream. Right? Uh, it's very powerful. And you, God knows that it's powerful. That's why he gives us also dreams and visions. When we talk about the prophetic, we, we seek God. And sometimes the word comes into our spirit, comes into our imagination. We talk about prophets who, had, who were seers. They would see in the spirit things that they would pick up, perceive visually. So what Satan does is he uses the same technique in our imagination. He takes us places. He shows us things. He says, look, if you do like this, it will be like that. Okay. So... Uh, don't, for, for us, we get stunned. We are like, what's happening? But that's how it is. He uses our mind. He uses our ability to imagine. And he will plant thoughts into our minds. Okay? But that's when we have to recognize and say, hey, wait a minute. This is temptation. I am being tempted. But I'm not going to act on it. Right? So think about 
the experience of Eve in the garden. Same thing. He tempted her. What did he tempt her with? A fruit. Right? He tempted her with a fruit and said, if you're going to eat of this tree, if you're going to eat of this fruit, you will become like God. So she's thinking that, oh, wow, you know, something new is going to happen if I eat of this fruit. And unfortunately, she yielded. See, being tempted is one thing. Yielding to the temptation is what is the mistake that we make. When we yield to it, that's when sin happens. Okay, So we should not yield to the temptations of the devil. Let's quickly look at one passage. 1 John chapter 2, verses 16 and 17. Someone please pick it up and read. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world is passing away, and the lust of it, but he who does the will of God abides forever. Okay. So in this um, section, we see certain categories. We'll quickly look at these categories, and then we will move on. Yeah, for all that is in the world, now notice, lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. What is lust? See, lust is excessive want. Now, the way God has designed us in the natural, there is a certain appetite that he has given us. Right, whether it is for food or for the things that we need, or you know, anything. There's a normal natural uh, appetite and a desire that we all carry, which is okay, which is good. It's it's good. God created us like that and it's holy. There's nothing wrong with that. But when we talk about lust, right? What is lust? Lust is excessive desire, it's unholy, it's not righteous anymore because we've gone beyond the limit and we are wanting those things, that is what Satan can use against us. Okay, So he's trying to tempt people with lust. What kind of lust? Lust of the flesh. Okay, Second is lust of the eyes. Finally, there is the pride of life. These are all of the world, it says. Okay, The world, there is... Um, like cosmos, that's the world that is used. The world systems. When we see the world around us, the world will try to attract us and give us those desires so that we can lust after it. And you know, we start to want it when we see these things. What are the categories? Lust of the flesh. Lust of the flesh is like uh, we desire to experience something. When we see, okay, oh, we are seeing this holiday, or we are seeing some food, right? We our body wants to take pleasure in it. So when I experience it, I feel like I'm fulfilled. So lust of the flesh is where the flesh wants to experience, indulge, and gain pleasure out of it. So there are things like that that the devil will tempt us with. Uh, and he'll say, no, no, you experience it. It's OK. It's good for you. But it's just the way he did it to Eve. He said, you eat of the apple. OK? You'll become like God. There's a lie attached to it. If you experience it, you're going to get something very nice. But he doesn't tell the full truth. He never told her that, you know, that, that is sin, uh, disobedience, rebellion against God, and the whole world will be corrupted with sin. That was the real truth. But he said, no, you will become like God. You will have knowledge like God. So Satan does that to us. He'll show us different things and say, don't worry, experience it. You'll get something good, some pleasure out of that. So that is the lust of the flesh. Now, lust of the eyes. What is the lust of the eyes? Lust of the eyes is same, like how he did to Eve. He showed her the fruit. So when she saw the fruit, we read, she felt it was good. It was nice. Oh, 
it looks so good so there was a pleasure that uh, she could draw from just looking at the fruit that is the lust of the eyes so sometimes what happens there are certain things that satan will tempt us with he'll say no you don't have to do it just watch it just see it it'll give you pleasure you'll you'll feel better you'll be so satisfied but that temptation is again leading us into destruction because we are not going to experience it we are not even thinking of experiencing it but we are just trying to derive pleasure from what we watch or see okay so the this uh, can fall in the category of pornography and you know things like that that people do they don't actually engage but they watch it and they think hey i didn't do anything but that's lust of the eyes satan is using that to destroy our soul and there is another uh, scripture it says fleshly lusts war against the soul so when we engage in things like this when we yield to lust you know who is the one who is uh, facing the most damage it's me it's my soul soul part of me right my soul uh, where i'm supposed to be confident where i'm supposed to um, you know, have focus where i'm supposed to you know be stable because soul is very god has given it to us to be able to function right in in a proper way but when we engage in lust the bible teaches us that the lusts uh, of youth the, the lusts fleshly lusts war against the soul so i become my own enemy and i'm destroying myself when i yield to lust so these are the things that happen so this is how satan tempts he'll say experience it lust of the flesh he'll say okay you don't have to experience just watch it just view it see it you'll be happy makes you happy lust of the eyes then pride of life pride of life is where um, we we think that you know having having uh, name fame money the like uh, status these are the things that are going to make us happy so unfortunately people given to it people of the world given to it because that's what satan tells them you need to have all these things then only people will uh, you know give give you a, an honorable place so but these things are not of the father these are of the world that's what the scripture says these are the temptations that he brings against us so we have to be careful we have to be careful especially in our where imagination this is where he'll get us so when it comes to our thoughts we have a, a question right like um, okay we are saying that satan can affect our thoughts so what do i do you know which thought do i trust when we think about our mind there are at least three sources from where thoughts come one is my own thought you know i think in my heart god has given me the ability to think i will do this i will not do that so my own thoughts are one they play in my mind second is god's thoughts the way god spoke to abraham the way you know prophetic words come dreams visions scripture starts to speak to us inspire us so god speaks in our minds god also uses our mind and our imagination next satan satan can plant some suggestions okay it's like gardening when we are gardening we may choose to have uh, a certain set of plants but what happens suddenly we start seeing some weeds here and there you know some unwanted plants now and now and then those we have to eliminate you have to uproot those things so if you see a weed get rid of it that's how the mind works god will plant some good things some are thoughts also may be pure like over the years we have our uh, knowledge and experience so we think we may have we may carry good thoughts we may have thoughts of the renewed mind we should have thoughts of the renewed mind as per the word right so our renewed mind and god speaking this will lead to life this will lead to uh, strength this will lead to holiness this will lead to victory right talk about all the wonderful things abundant life god's speaking to me and my renewed mind that's how i should live my life now there is the next category that is satan's thoughts 
Now, if we go in that direction, those are the weeds, unwanted plants. Every time a thought comes, my responsibility is to keep my garden beautiful, take it out, throw it. Get rid of every thought which is of the evil one. Let's now go to a passage in 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verses 3 to 6. Could somebody please read it? For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, mm -hmm. casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ yeah. and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. Okay, so let's talk a little bit more about uprooting the wrong thoughts. In this passage from 2 Corinthians 10, we see, uh, if you may want to call it again a progression. Okay, I'll read for us once more. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war according to the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty in God for pulling down strongholds, casting down arguments, every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ and being ready to punish all disobedience when your obedience is fulfilled. So notice there, there are some terms. We are going backwards, casting down, uh, you know, uh, pulling down every thought, right? Pulling down every thought which is not in obedience to Christ. So there is a mention of thoughts. And then there is a mention of imaginations, OK? There is also a mention of arguments and strongholds. So we'll try to understand this. So far, what did I say? Listen to God's voice. Listen to the renewed mind. That leads to abundant life. But on the other hand, if we listen to the suggestions of Satan, okay, all these things, temptation, deception, accusation, oppression, everything, whatever Satan speaks, which is not aligned to God's word, then what happens? If we keep listening, what happens? So if you see this passage, we are told in verse 5, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing every thought into captivity to the obedience of Christ. So even if there is one thought which is against God in my mind, OK, what should I do? I have to master it. I have to overcome it. Now, we may argue and say, it's just one thought, right? one thought. How can one thought harm us? Everything else, it's aligned to God. Only one thought. How many thoughts did Eve need to make her decision? One thought. You now, David fell into sin with Bathsheba. How many thoughts did he need? One thought. So when you notice people sinning, like even in the word of God, that's all Satan needs. Just one thought. Yeah, it, it would be nice if I... That's it. The moment we give in to temptation, he's got us. There's only one thought, right? That is why the scripture says, taking every thought into captivity, which exalts itself against, you know, and bringing it into obedience. So that's my job. If I want to stay out of temptation, that's my job. That one thought which is against God, I need to master it. How do I do it? The scripture itself is saying, bring it into captivity or tear it down. Tear it down. Okay, no place for that thought in my mind. No devil, what you're saying is wrong. How did Jesus bring it into captivity? What was Jesus's method? 
when he was tempted? It is written. Yeah, he always went back to scripture and said, no devil, it is written. It is written. I know what the word says. You're quoting it wrong. Okay, that's it's not how it's applied. It's applied like this. It is written. So the best way to battle against temptation is through the word of God. That's why I'm saying renewed mind. Get the word inside us. Then when temptation comes, uh, will temptation come with an appointment? Okay, tomorrow I'll come, 5 o'clock. Okay, let's meet. No, it will just come suddenly. So when it comes suddenly, my heart should be full of the word of God. Then I can face it and say, no, I will not do this because it is written. Now let's just take, I'm just taking one simple example. Like, um, uh, I mean, common, I think, for all young people, maybe uh, some kind of a substance abuse or, you know, we, we want to uh, find pleasure the way other young people find pleasure, right? Like uh, substance abuse or maybe alcohol or smoking or something like that. So when the thought comes to our minds, okay, just an example, just a thought comes and says, uh, you know, why can't you be like other young people? You know, they're all enjoying their life. You're not enjoying your life, right? It's just one thought. It comes to my, our mind. Now, as a child of God, I need to get my weapons against the devil and say, hey, come on. I can't do that because I'm going to destroy my body. My body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. It is written, my body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. I cannot do this because it will only lead to my destruction, right? Uh, or you can start uh, quoting scriptures about how God has a great purpose. Uh, no eye has seen, no ear has heard, no mind has conceived the things that God has prepared for me because I love him. So great things are ahead of me. I cannot afford to mess up my life with all these you know, unnecessary activities. So you've got to bring out the arsenal of scripture. It's only one thought. What is Satan saying? Come on, enjoy your life. You say, no way. What you're saying is half truth. It's not the truth. Just the way he spoke to Eve. You'll become like God. But what is the reality? Destruction. Right? Corruption by sin. So, one thought, our job is to fight it with scripture. You got it? So that's how we have to fight it. Now, let's say the believer doesn't fight the thought. He leaves it. Entertaining the thought. Right? Uh, thinking a little more about it. Yeah, actually, you know, why am I like this? Everybody else seems to be having more fun. Okay, then what happens? Then you see the word there. Um, okay, uh, there is the term arguments, okay, casting down arguments and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God. So, uh, I want to talk about imaginations. Okay, imaginations. So, between the thoughts. And the arguments is another stage, if you will, called as imagination. So what happens? We've entertained the thought that, yeah, I'm also young. I also need to enjoy my life. Now, what Satan will do is in the, in the, uh, in the area of our mind, in our imagination, he will give us some suggestions where we will think. We will sort of see pictures of us going and having a good time and making more friends and just enjoying our lives. So pictures in our imagination get painted if we don't deal with the thought. It goes to the next level. And it becomes harder to resist, isn't it? So when it's just a thought, you can quickly resist. You can just pull it up. Now imagine the uh, weed in the garden. It has roots. It has grown a little bit more. Is it going to be more difficult to pull it out? Of course. So now the next level is imagination where I begin to see myself doing these things. I've not done it, but I'm seeing and I'm getting pleasure out of it. I'm thinking, yeah, actually, this might happen. I might meet so-and-so. It'll be good. It'll be fun. Imagination is going on in my mind, right? Then I'm moving towards it. I'm one step closer to doing what Satan told me to do. Imagination, right? Now we started using my imagination because as a believer, I didn't take charge of one thought. OK, fine. We've come to the stage of imagination. Now what is next? Next is 
arguments arguments so what are arguments reasonings it's like this uh, let's just suggest okay uh, that uh, the young person wants to consume alcohol right so then the arguments will come in their minds oh even jesus turned water into wine uh, or uh, uh, they give communion no communion is also wine uh, nothing wrong what is there if i have a little bit of wine uh, paul told timothy have a little bit of wine you start quoting scripture full wrong context is wrong okay but it's become an argument in our minds now when people come to tell us hey don't do this it's not good for you we have an argument we have a reasoning why i saw pastor in the wedding pastor also they gave that communion thing or they give wine in the wedding i saw pastor also had a little bit if pastor can have i will have right all kinds of arguments because now the person wants to do it they have decided you can't talk to them self convinced themselves with reasonings i know why it's good for the heart it's good for the brain you know you read some articles arguments reasonings it settled in my mind now who who can stop me from doing what i want to do but also let's notice that it's getting tougher and tougher to come out this is what happens to believers they just move into it satan says something they don't know the word their mind is not filled with the word they don't yield to the conviction of the holy spirit and they think what can happen nothing will happen let's go let's get into it and the bible says you know sin is entangling entangling means have you seen uh, wool which they knit right wool when you first bring it sometimes they'll just give you they won't make a ball they'll just give you as it is if you're not careful like you open it up and maybe your child comes and plays with it or something you will sit there forever trying to pull it out you know which is the right end pull it out and sort it out it's entangled that's what sin does to our lives in the beginning looks very attractive but when you step into it and how does satan take you into it stages thoughts imaginations arguments reasonings finally stronghold the stronghold what is stronghold um i i like to think of it like this if there's cement or somebody is mixed up cement and uh, you put the cement right it's still soft it's still wet and you can probably stick something into it and it'll hold all that's okay imagine you go stand in wet cement okay put your foot there just stand there for some time nobody does that but i'm just for us to think what will happen after some time if it sets your feet are stuck you're stuck there now coming out is a big problem that's a stronghold where you went on with the suggestions of the devil sin entangles now you're stuck that's a stronghold now coming out of a stronghold takes so much more energy that's when we say okay brother fast and pray you know uh, we have to cast out the demons do this do that because person is stuck okay it takes more effort they have had more losses uh, and literally satan is beginning to destroy their lives but there is a progression it doesn't happen overnight it doesn't happen like oh yesterday uh, i thought of this to tomorrow i'm in i've i'm stuck usually what people do is that if if you may want to call it spiritual carelessness they say yeah it's okay it's okay it's okay slowly slowly little by little, little before you know it you're like how did i get stuck because we just kept saying yes to the suggestions of the devil so that is how temptation leads us into sin it can lead us into a stronghold and when there is a stronghold it's more difficult to break and i was sharing with us that stronghold means that it's a fortress in the uh, past days when there were kings they would build a fortress around the city and people can't go out people can't come in it's it used to protect them right so a stronghold means 
it's a shelter it's a shelter so a shelter in the mind can house demons they stay there because what do they find in our minds they found strongholds so that is where we say the person is demonized so in a spirit in our heart who's living in our hearts christ lives in the heart we saw that right colossians 3:16 christ lives in the heart where are these demons person is a believer but he's manifesting person is a believer she is manifesting what happened stronghold of the mind that's where the demons are christ is in the heart demons are in the strongholds okay now we have to cast out the demons we have to break the strongholds uh, of course we have to meaning the person has to go through the process of uh, you know coming out of the situation right so all this happens now I, i'll just touch on few things and i'll take questions quickly uh, now temptation james apostle james he writes he says that god does not tempt us okay because that becomes our um, guess sometimes in in james chapter 1 he says god does not tempt us god does not tempt anyone it's not like god is tempting us and by tempting us he'll make us a better person god does not tempt is what the bible says god doesn't do that god doesn't try to attract us into sin okay uh, so we should never say that god put me in that place that's why i fell you know i was never going to do it but god made the situation he put me in that place and i sinned right no god does not tempt us how does temptation how how do we get tempted and yield to it james says it comes from our own hearts there are things in our own hearts that we have not dealt with we have not dealt with it roots are still there maybe we trimmed the uh, the leaves root is still there again it's coming back what is happening to me i thought i already overcame you know i'm a new person in christ why am i again tempted in the same area roots are still there we didn't deal with the roots so where does temptation come from satan knows the roots are there come let's go let's try to get it to grow so temptation happens because because of our own desires that's what the bible says so if i'm tempted in different areas i really have to check what's happening maybe i need to renew my mind you know as far as uh, money is concerned maybe i have to renew my mind as far as you know um, family life is concerned i need to renew my mind as far as uh, sexuality is concerned i need to renew my mind you know as far as relationships are concerned so i have to put in that work i have to get rid of you know wrong roots within me and when i he- have my heart healed then when satan comes to tempt there are no roots then what will he do he can't do anything because root has come out got it so we have to put in some work and be very honest with ourselves why why am i being tempted in this area again and again maybe i don't carry enough word maybe i have not been through complete healing in that area so do put in the work right uh, build ourselves up in the lord then we can immediately catch the devil when he comes tempting us okay so that's the way we deal with it god is not tempting us god cannot tempt us that's what james says why are we tempted because of our own desires that's why temptation is happening okay uh, so all this we've understood we've also seen how to overcome temptation how do we overcome we've been saying it repeatedly speak the word speak the word ephesians 6 verse 17 it says um the the sword of the spirit which is the word of god what did we learn earlier put on the full armor of god you know, so that you can face the wiles of the devil so in the armor of god we'll come to it we'll study the armor in detail all the parts of the armor 
you would notice that uh, they are generally defensive. Okay, defensive means we are only protecting ourselves. When you put it on, if any arrow comes, any attack comes, we are safe. But the sword of the spirit is offensive, meaning we can take the sword and we can attack. Got it? So that is one portion of the armor with which we can attack the devil, the sword of the spirit. Like if you come this side, you've had it, devil, because I have the word of God in my heart. Take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. So how to overcome temptation? This is the primary way. You have to take the word and you have to destroy the lies. Okay. So if, if we feel, oh, I don't know so much of the word, no problem. Take a notebook or, you know, open up a word doc, write down the areas where you're constantly being tempted, pull out scriptures, make a list of scriptures, put it there. For yourself right memorize them meditate on them every time temptation comes start quoting so the moment you start quoting so the devil will be like oh my gosh it's a headache to tempt this person i'll go find somebody else because now they started quoting all these scriptures okay so that's the primary way or the the main way to overcome temptation speak the word face the devil with the word take the sword and start to destroy the lies another way jesus said watch and pray to his disciples they slept off okay they were tempted they, they slept but he says look you want to overcome the weaknesses of your flesh pray watch and pray have that maintain that that alertness of spirit to be a prayerful person at all times even then satan can't get you prayer will also protect us from um, temptation. Okay, so these are just some key points we have discussed right now. We'll take up questions. I'll uh, first go to Warren because he had he had uh... yes um... yes Warren no yeah I mean I'm just trying to get my head around the fact you know when we say that uh, he who is in me is greater than he who is in the world. Yes. And we, uh, when we talk about temptation, we say that the the, the enemy tempts us in the mind. Mm. How, how, how can the enemy get into our mind? I'm, that's what I'm trying to get in my round. Okay. See, the thoughts are, he doesn't have to get into the mind to give us suggestions. No, Warren, like he can just speak it to us. So, yeah, I, I, I understand. But I mean, I think, yeah, okay. If we have, so would it be right in saying that if we have been exposed to a certain type of uh, sin or uh, or things that are not in, in alignment with God, and even though then after some time we become believers, mm -hmm. the enemy sort of tries to f bring our focus back on those things to remind possible. us of our past? Possible, yeah, that's possible. Okay. So the mind is so very important, so very important. And, you know, Satan is, he's not God, he's limited, but he can have knowledge of our past. Isn't it? So, yeah, he can do thanks. things the way you stated. Sure, thanks. Okay. Sure. Thank you. Uh, yeah, coming to kill. Isn't it true that uh, all temptations are not external? Some could also be self-led and self-driven. Like we tempting ourselves? Uh, not all the time. We can, you know, to be honest, too. You can't just blame Satan or the external forces. Mm. Something could be also. Okay, I've never thought about self-temptation. Honestly, I haven't. So I, I don't think self-temptation, but uh, you know, self self-driven, as in, um, you know, I've heard preachers uh, preach as well. You know, sometimes saying that you know we do things by our own uh, flesh and thought process, and we just put the blame on you know, no, it's the Satan thing. So yeah, in that light. 
okay uh, that uh, i mean i i see where you're coming from you're saying the flesh is the source our flesh is the source um because we we have greed let's say money right uh, so it's in my flesh and i'm just letting that arise in me uh, so i can't really go and blame the devil i didn't overcome my flesh and so i'm having that problem yeah possible Okay, that's uh, about temptation. I hope it's useful, not just to clear the exam, but to be able to uh, fight the devil on a daily basis in our lives. Any other questions around that? So the key is to live like Jesus. Okay, live life the Jesus way. How did he live? John fourteen thirty, where he told the devil, "Look, you have nothing in me." So when we walk in righteousness, right relationship with God, getting rid of sin, Hebrews twelve, you know, it says, uh, setting aside every weight that so easily ensnares us. What is that weight? Sin. Setting aside every sin. Is there anything sinful that is part of my life today? I got to get rid of it. So when I get rid of it, um, and I also fill my mind, my heart with the Word of God, I go through the renewal process. Right then, the devil can try to tempt me, but he will not be successful. Okay, so. Uh, Fine, let me just leave it at this. Uh, maybe we can all think through and then come back. We'll pick up with temptation and go on to other methods that the devil uses in our lives. So uh, what we learned today is applicable at all stages. Now we can't say that, oh, today I'm a young believer, so I'm going to learn to overcome temptation. Tomorrow you may be a pastor, you still have to overcome temptation. right? You may be a leader, you may be an apostle. Sorry, the devil tempted Jesus. He didn't spare Jesus. So is he going to spare us? No. We better learn how to overcome temptation. Okay, um, fine. So with that thought, let's... Uh, okay, Sam. Uh, yes, Sam, please go ahead. Yeah, just just a thought. Like I think we, we are talking about uh, the mind, right? And, uh, yeah. you know, how the devil can tempt um our minds but also i was just thinking like we have a carnal mind so we ourselves can you know in our own thoughts uh, can go away from god right and and paul paul says to renew our mind True. so you know it's it's not just the devil but also it's our own carnal mind and you know we are spirit soul and body so the soul and body are always trying to get away from god and yeah. Um, we need to, what is fed into the spirit needs to be, you know, moved into the soul and body. Is that is that a framework that uh, that also... Yeah, you're right. So, see, uh, carnal thinking is of us. You're right about that. Mm, so, when we talk about the mind, there's, there's a book that Pastor has written. It's called The Conquest of the Mind. You probably have already done it or you may do it. In that Again, he talks about um, three three kinds of mind. Uh, one is a natural mind, the carnal mind, the spiritual mind. And for a believer, we have to operate out of the spiritual mind as much as possible. The natural mind is also good. You know, it's logic and uh, natural reasoning, which is also good. But uh, predominantly, you know, we have to operate out of the spiritual mind. And the carnal mind should become zero. As we are walking with the Lord, the carnal mind should become zero. That's the goal. Okay, so uh, yeah, Sam, just add it to what you shared. Yeah, yeah, yeah. thanks. Okay.
All right. With that final thought, let's pray and uh, close then. Uh, who would like to lead us in prayer? Anyone can, online, on campus. Pastor, I'll pray. Yes, please. Yes, Angeline. Lord, we thank you for this beautiful day that you have given us, Father God. Lord, we want to thank you for all the lessons that we learned today. Lord, we pray that you will give us the grace, Lord, to put everything that we learned today into practice. We pray that we will learn to use your word as a sword in our lives when we are yielded with temptations, when our mind is... Uh, lost and the devil tries to take in control of our mind. We pray that your word will be a sword. We pray that you will give each of us the grace to do it, Father God. We thank you for Pastor Nancy. We thank you for all the lessons that you have been using her to teach us, Father God. We thank you. We praise you for all the faculty, for all the students. We give you all the glory, honor, and praise in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 And thank you, Angeline. Thank you, everyone. God bless you. Overcome every temptation. <laughs> All right, we'll meet in the next class. Bye for now. Thank you.